Hi everybody, welcome back to Bobby's Bucks and today we're going to talk about food plots and why I plant what I plant. We're going to talk about when and how much. We're going to talk all about it in this video. Here we go. So I'm sitting out here by the bonfire because uh, my buddy gave me a buck that he shot on public land, shot a really good buck. Here's the buck that he shot. It's a really nice 10 point. So I told him, hey, I'd be more than happy to clean that up for him. We're just gonna boil it for a little bit and then power wash it off. Leave it out in the sun for a little bit. It'll be nice and white and clean. And we have a video on that too if you'd like to see how we do our European mounts. So while that rack just boils up a little bit, and we're only gonna do it for about 10 minutes, then we'll power wash the rest of it off. I just wanna talk about food plots. And you know, we're getting ready to plant our food plot here pretty soon. And we have two sides, we always run two sides. And over the years, I played with stuff. You know, I used to do oats on one side, brassicas on the other. Um, I, I used to have all clover. You can actually see a, a video, I'll put a video up in the corner that will show you um, years ago when we did this big clover plot, it turned out great. And I'll just explain why I don't do clover anymore. I don't know about you, but when I, when I hunt, I want the deer going through my property and, and traveling there because I have food there. You know, that's, that's why we plant our food plots. But if you're not planting the right stuff like clover, um, which, you know, basically dies out by the time it gets, you know, hunting season um, or it's eaten all up, you know, sometimes if it doesn't get touched or if you plant late clover in the fall, um, you may have some clover, but it doesn't really grow once it starts to get cold. So, and it will just, you know, go into dormancy. So, you want to plant stuff for winter time. And what, what's a really great winter food plot? A brassica blend. Okay, now you can go probably to your, your local feed store or, or your local seed store, your elevator, and you can probably ask them, them for a brassica blend. Or just like a turnips and radishes, something like that. Um, but they probably have a blend that will maybe be 20, 30 bucks at the most, and it's gonna be just as good, if not better, than that bag with the deer on it. Now, that's good stuff too, and that's really convenient to go into Myers and pick up a, a bag of winter greens or something. Uh, Biologic winter greens is a, is a great blend, but a little pricey. If you're gonna throw something else in, you can always throw in some, some oats or some winter rye. Um, now, winter rye can really go over pretty much anything you know, some really good stuff to plant in the winter time would be, you know, corn. Corn's gonna offer, they're really gonna hit that hard. Deer need more than corn. Corn's actually, if they were just to eat corn, it's bad for them, but they're always gonna eat other stuff because when it gets cold and everything starts to die back and you have this food plot that, that, that's really lush, I mean, talk about a magnet. You know, as long as you're just not standing out there with your bow or your gun the whole time, um, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get hit pretty hard by these deer and, and maybe even hit so hard that you don't have any food left. So especially if you have switchgrass up or privacy where these deer can feel secure. So, but what, what kind of stuff are we talking about? We're well, we already talked about our brassica blend, but then there's oats, peas, and beans, or there's corn. Beans and the beans, they can be, you can just blanket it with winter rye. And the winter weeds will grow anytime it hits 40 degrees, it'll start to green up and grow. It'll, it'll provide a lot of food just in case anything were not to grow right. You can, it'll fill in all these bare patches. So you can see this half is gonna all be rolled and crushed. And we're gonna have our peas and oats and beans over there. We're also gonna have some winter rye. There's all these guys on the internet that talk about no plow, no till. And this, this is one of those systems that I've adopted and, and used over the years. And it really does work great. Especially for people that, that have a small, you know, John Deere lawnmower and not a big tractor. So, so that, we're gonna worry about that later in August, like mid-August, but this field, this side over here, it's dying already. We've already sprayed it. It's the, the, the end of July right now. And the first week, definitely by the second week of August, we'll have all our brassica planted. We wanna get it in there like first week of August. It needs a little bit more time. So that goes in first. The brassica blend goes in first. That's gotta be on bare soil. You can just overseed that, blanket your dirt area. But again, follow the instructions. Wait for rain, that way it gets immediate germination, 
but it will grow really well right on bare dirt. You don't have to worry about planting it underneath the soil or anything like that. Now, this side, we're gonna kill all that. We're probably gonna plant it more towards the end of August, mid-August to, to the end of August. We're gonna walk through the field. We're gonna plant oats, peas, and beans. And then we're gonna crush it. We're gonna, we're gonna crush the vegetation over the seed and spray it. So consider planting a few apple trees. We, we have about 20 of them in the back of our property. Over the years, we planted a couple every year, and it doesn't take long to have yourself a nice little orchard. This is another tool in the, in the hunting tool belt to draw deer in, and uh, I, I couldn't recommend it enough. You know, and, and apple trees are pretty easy to grow. You can, it really comes down to just three times a year of fertilization, spring, summer, and fall, and you know, tying down your branches so you got horizontal branch growth. They only have to be tied down for a couple months, and be sure to use a dormant oil spray to kill any bugs that were that, that were nesting over the winter on your trees. You can spray that once and then once the summer starts you can spray a horticultural oil. You don't have to get too technical and that's going to make a terrific difference than just letting your, your trees grow up. When they grow, when we first plant them we lay down some landscape fabric around them and then we put a nice cage wire, about a four foot tall cage wire around them. And, and that's really it. Uh, the first year you want to water them, you know, be sure to give them a lot of water and then after the first year of establishing a healthy root system, they're going to be fine. Now, of course, once in a while you'll have maybe one that's been a attacked by something, but I could say a majority of the time you're going to have success with that minimal maintenance plan. So it's August 1st, I'm getting excited. You know, I've got the trail cameras hung, we're trying a new trail camera this year. We went ahead and sold all of our no-glow I'm sorry, we went ahead and sold all of our cameras that glow. You know, a lot of times at night, you'll see that red glow, and deer notice that. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to take pictures and monitor deer activity, but without letting them know. And when you're educating deer, that's never a good thing. You know, but come time to where they're really getting hunted hard, they're gonna know which places are absent of all those glows and, and human scent, and that's, that plays a factor. So I recommend getting a no-glow camera and we tested this one out Udman I always want to test out stuff before I recommend things and we tried the pictures we tried the video this camera's got a third of a second trigger and it's really quick we're not getting any wait I mean this thing has caught about every critter on this property from uh, possums squirrels rabbits raccoons fawns uh, and we even caught a nice deer got a good buck on it too so that's always nice, that always pumps you up too. It's nice to get pictures of does and, and young bucks, but at least there's one target buck. I just wanted to mention to everyone who enjoys fishing that there's this really cool product out there that, you, you know, no more removing your battery, taking it in the house. You know, some of those batteries are pretty heavy. Lugging it back out to the boat. There's a little solar trickle charger that you can just hook up. You can charge, you can pick the five watt or the 10 watt, and I'll put it down, I'll link it down in the description. It's a free link for anyone to use. It doesn't cost a thing and uh, just makes it easier to find that product. I just thought it was really cool. I wanted to share this. Uh, I was always carrying the battery in and out and it was, it was such a pain in the butt. So now I've got the, it just clips right onto the battery and it's just so convenient. So the battery just stays there all season long. You know, I, it wasn't until about three years ago that uh, Chris, a good friend of mine, took me f fishing and it was like where I was blind, now I can see. I'm enjoying figuring out fishing so much. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny, in the beginning, I just had to figure out what the heck they were saying. I mean, all the, all the names for the, the fishing line and the rods, and especially the lures and just the rigs, it was like a whole new language. So, but man, I'm, I'm really having a good time fishing and, and uh, you guys may even already know about these products, but I just wanted to mention that. Uh, be sure to check out our storefront for fishing products. We have lots of good products in there. Uh, everything that I have, um, you know, I'm buying stuff like a maniac because uh, I really fell in love with fishing. So uh, be sure to check that out if you guys also love to fish. Lots of good stuff in there. Hey guys, just wanted to mention if you're not close to a seed elevator, you know, I always recommend to help out your local seed elevator business, but you know, and they're going to they're going to have a, a better deal. But if you want to just if you don't have access to that and you want seeds sent to your house, um, we have, we'll put a link down in the description below. It's free to use 
Amazon actually hooks us up every time somebody buys a, a bag of that, but it's at no extra cost to you. Thank you for doing that. And that's, an, that's a terrific brassica blend. It's got radishes and turnips. It's called Winter Greens from Biologic, and we'll leave it down below for you. But so this video is just a helpful reminder. Get out there, you guys, and kill your food plots. Be sure to, to, to prep it and put that seed down. You can plant it August 1st and let that. Brassicas need to, be, to grow a little bit sooner So for as far as the late season food plots go. So you want to plant it August 1st, mid-August. Um, you know, Just get it in the ground as soon as you can. But you want to plant it over bare ground, and that should take. Put, be sure to put it down when you're expecting rain. Stay tuned for part two, where we're gonna plant the peas and beans and oats, and we'll go over that. Hope this is your year. Hope you guys kill a big deer, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. During the summer, the deer have a lot to eat. And Merged vegetation. Look at these girls. What are you girls doing? They love hanging out. They want to be on. You guys want to be on YouTube? This is weird. This is what kind of bird? It's my chickens. She's funny. Most chickens don't let you pick them up. She's a nice, she's a sweetie. <laughs> so be sure to get out there and, and prep your plots. And uh, you know, because now's the time. You can, you can get yourself, a, okay, I can't have you doing that. You girls are gonna have to get out of here. All right, here, I guess I'm gonna have to go let them back into their coop.